Hello again, all you video watcher people types. Yeah. It's me again doing another one of those vlog movie review type thingy things. Movie, yes. And um, this time around, I'm doing. Uh, Valyrian and the City of a Thousand Planets, um, which um, I was actually kind of uh, when I heard it was it was coming out, I was kind of like, ooh, you know, I wasn't ex I wasn't expecting that because um, a lot of the movies that I wind up reviewing for um, for the this channel are ones that you know there's been a lot of buzz about you know it's like a comic book movie you know like a a, a Marvel movie or a DC movie um, when one of those comes out it's you know da -da -da, there's you know people going woo what's going to happen all over the freaking planet um, but this one. This is actually another comic book movie, um, but it's not an American um, comic book. It's a French comic book. Or is it? It's either French or Belgian or one of the... Anyway. Um, what it is, it's, um, it is based on a comic which is not running anymore, but it ran for a long time. It ran from, like, the 60s through, um, at least the 80s, um, maybe into the 90s? I don't know. For, 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 for quite a while it ran. Um, and it, it was called Valerian and Laureline. Um, and the, uh, the basic concept behind this series is, uh, it's set way off in the far future, um, when there is, uh, where humanity has not only reached the stars and, um, uh, made contact with multiple other races as, you know, usual sort of, sort of futuristic science, sort of, you know, um, but they also have, uh, discovered a way to travel through time. Um, excuse me. So they can travel through space and time at will, you know, they've got these super advanced sort of spaceship things that can do that. And, um, Valerian and Loreline are agents of the, uh, the human, uh, Empire is the wrong word, but uh, I think in the series they're called Galaxity. I, I may be mis I may be misremembering that, but it's you know kind of the the central you know people who run through it, run everything. They 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 go you know they they go to various different planets and back in time and so on and so forth to you know uh, oh you know. There's a there's a crime that needs investigating, or oh, there's a, a new thing out in space we need to look at, or oh, there's like possible war brewing on this other planet over here. You know, it's it's it's, it's that sort of thing. Um, if there's something that needs looking into, they look into it, and it's. I haven't read all of of the series because, like I said, it's a long running one, and I've only been reading it. I've I've been collecting the things for like a. a off and on for like a few years now, but I have, I have, um, I think the first, uh, the first four, or most of the, the, the I think, but I believe the very first, uh, Valerian and Loreline story, um, has not actually been, um, translated into English yet, so... You know, that aces me out. But, um... But, um... I have been reading it, and... I'm actually... I actually 
think it's quite good. It's it's full of you know the sort of thing that the the French slash Belgian comics and well European comics in general to to some degree um, tend to specialize in, which is the kind of the weird science fiction sort of stuff, like you know. Uh, this is just kind of, you take a basic concept and you examine it in these strange and intricate ways that, you know, and and, and there's, there's lots of pretty, pretty pictures, you know. Um, and it's, it's so, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to read and I am continuing to collect it. Um, and uh, I actually... Getting back to the movie, you know, it's called The City of a Thousand Planets. I thought it was actually going to be, therefore, going to be based on this. Um, this uh, collection, of The Empire of a Thousand Planets, which is actually number two or technically three. Um, so I, I actually I read this this after, I reread this this afternoon before I. Um, before I started off for the theater, um, so I would be up, uh, I would be up on the source material. But as it happens, I was wrong because, as best I can determine, it's not based on any one volume. Or if it is based on one of them, it's one a bit further along that I haven't read yet. Um, so enough, enough waffling for now. Let's let's get get up. What's it about? Well. Valerian and Loreline, as in the, the the comic, are agents of of humankind, and there is a uh, this space station called uh, called Alpha. I think it's just called Alpha. I mean, it may be called Space Station Alpha or something like that, but whatever. It's a This gigantic space station, which is run and governed by by hum by humans, but has mil you know a whole bunch of I mean, it's a city of a thousand planets. This is the city. It's like a great big city out in space with a whole bunch of like little micro environments and thousands of different species and you know all all in this one gigantic space station which is you know super super advanced and has little little environments and you know underwater areas and and all walk kind of stuff. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, Valerian and Lorelin have been, um, uh, have been summoned to this place because, uh, basically, they're summoned there because, uh, there's a, an area in the an area in the, the space station which uh, is um, has been termed off limits by the by the, the people in charge. It's like, oh, there's like dangerous radiation, and you know, we've sent people in to discover, it, but they haven't come back. And oh, you know, we we we've got to figure out what's going on here. Um, and. Um, so, uh, so the Val Valerian and Lorelein are there essentially as backup, and because they have another, they they have like a plot device, which I won't go into, but um, it's just like oh, that might be useful, but um, uh, basically, the man in charge gets kidnapped by these this race of aliens which you know or members of or not not that the race has a whole on them but these these aliens that valerian has 
a, a, an odd sort of a connection to. It's like, hey, you seem vaguely familiar, but I have no idea from where. And and so, uh, you know, naturally they've got to get him back, and uh, the, the the plot goes on from there. Um, so. Um, to start with, I'll just, yeah, to start with, one thing, I think just any, about anybody will tell you who's watched this film, is that it looks amazing. It's directed by, uh, Luc Besson, who, um, you'll probably recognize the name, he's, among other thing, he, things, he was the director of The Fifth Element, which... Um, if you've seen that, it, it, it had, it, a lot of the, vi some of the visuals from that were ta actually taken directly from, from some of the later albums of Valerian and Laureline, and, um, so he's, he's been a big fan of the series for a long time, and he's got a real flair for visuals, and there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of CGI. I believe there's also like some, some you know, makeup and costumes and probably animatronics too. But let's face it, probably mostly CGI. But it, it looks good, and it's it's all you know. There's this great design work. There's beautiful visuals. All these you know, bunch of alien species and little monster critters and. Uh, uh, there's a bit, uh, actually, there's a bit, uh, a rather important sort of a plot-related bit on a, like, an alien planet, and I'm not going into the details, but it, it is, it's on an alien planet, which reminded me very much of, um, a movie, a, a French animated movie called Gandahar, or it was released over here as Light Years, um, which uh it, yeah, I, I won't describe that but it's it's a very sort of a triply animated thing it's it's done by the same director who directed a uh, fantastic planet i believe that yeah i believe it's fantastic planet um if you've heard of, you probably you may have heard of that um anyway yeah it very much reminded me of of that so it's it's, if you like kind of sort of that style of, of, uh, sort of trippy French science fiction, and you like great visuals and weird alien things and all that sort of thing, this, this movie looks great. It's, it's, you know, very colorful. It's refreshingly kind of, you know, interesting, and it's, there's nothing kind of like, oh, this is done by committee, you are trying to please the most amount of people, and we think the most amount of people are stupid, so we, you know, there's, there's none of that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's all done with amazing imagination and flair in that regard. Um, and it is also, it holds dual records, I believe, in being both the biggest and most expensive movie ever made in France and independently. So it's, in that regard, it's, you know, well, that's kind of cool. You know, we're, we, we've got something like this that's not just coming out of Hollywood for once. You know, this is, this is from the, the, the guys from across the pond, they could do this too. And it's cool, you know. <laughs> I'm all for that. Um, however, the, you know, there's a couple of... I think the movie isn't perfect, and I think kind of my main gripes with it would be some of the acting. Now, not that any of the acting is bad, exactly. It's, it's not... But, um... Well, let's start. Let's start with Valerian and and Laureline. Um, 
Valyrian... Uh, I made notes. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, I did my homework. Valyrian was played by Dane... Dane DeHaan and uh, Loreline by Kara, I believe it's pronounced Delavine. If it's not, I'm I'm in a pickle because it's spelled Delavine. I can't pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced Delavine, so yeah, anyway, Kara Delavine. And neither of them is bad exactly, but. I don't know if I would exactly call it brilliant casting. I mean, it's like... Getting back to the the comic for the moment. Um, the Valyrian, like, I, as I described, you know, he's he's an agent for... for... Uh, Galaxity. Again, if I'm remembering that right. And... He's a relatively... He doesn't start out the series, as I can tell, not having read the very first one, but from what I read of it, he, he doesn't, like... It's not one of those things where he starts out like a newbie and you see him, you know, rise up the ranks. No, he starts a seasoned operative. He's essentially... He's, 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 he's almost like James Bond, in a sense. If you, not not literally and exactly, but, you know, James Bond is not an old guy, but he's been at this for a little while, you know, and he knows his stuff. He's a seasoned operative, and so is Valerian. And Dane DeHaan is... I don't know exactly how old Dane DeHaan is, but... He, uh, I, th he looks kind of young. To I mean, there's there, you know, you could say, oh well, this is a different character, sort of, you know, it's an adaptation. You got, but he he has like a line where he talks about, oh, you know, I've been through all these missions, and I'm <laughs> he doesn't look like someone who's been through like a million missions for. The, the where the fate of the universe is at stake. He looks like, you know, he looks like a young guy who's, he, you, you know, he could pass off as a college student. And he's kind of a skinny, shrimpy kind of dude. Not, 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 not that, I, I'm not insulting Dane DeHaan's looks. You know, no, he's, he's a, good-looking guy, and he's got a charisma to him, and he's not a bad actor, but, you know, you need someone, you know, if you're, if you're doing that sort of a role, you really need someone with a bit of, you know, stage presence, and that's someone who you know, should be a slightly older guy, not like, like, you know, middle-aged necessarily, but, you know, Maybe in like his early thirties. I, I really should have looked up Dane DeHaan's age, but I'm guessing, going by what his appearance, I'm guessing he's probably in like his early, early to mid twenties at the latest. He doesn't look like a seasoned operative. He's it, also it's kind of because of that. Some of his lines kind of make him come across as a little bit of a jerk. I mean, it's, he's not a jerk, his character isn't a jerk, but it's like, you know, it's kind of, if it was coming from someone who looked like he'd been around the block a time or two and knew his stuff, it kind of like, it would kind of come across as kind of a, well, oh, you know, but here it comes across as like some sort of cocky guy who's just graduated and already thinks he's the god's gift to you know, it's... It, casting really does matter in terms of how lines work. And Dane DeHaan is really not who I would have cast as Valerian. I mean, Valerian, from the comics, you know, he, he is kind of... He has, like, he can be kind of cocky and a bit of a goofball sometimes, but it's kind of... 
it all comes across as like I've earned the right to be a cocky goofball. I'm I know my stuff. Um, and Loreline, actually, this wouldn't have been a bad Loreline in terms of of casting because if they had gotten a slightly older um, Valerian, but she's she's very different from the from the comic version. The comic Valerian and Loreline have a kind of a a friendly um but platonic kind of back and forth going on at least in what I've read so far um here it's kind of there's a romantic angle where it, no it's kind of like he's in love with her she isn't really buying it she's kind of her main sort of thing throughout the film is that, you know, she's not really taking any of his guff. It's like she does care for him, but at the same time, she, she kind of, you know, why am I putting up with this jerk? You know, it was that sort of sort of vibe. It's not really the same thing. Um, and also, let's see, um, oh yeah... There are a few kind of bits of. I got the feeling maybe the script could have could have used a little more fleshing out. Not that it's bad, but there are are bits where, for example, there are like some sort of alien characters who are kind not exactly comic relief, but kind of the light-hearted elements of the film that um, seem like they show up frequently for a while. And it, I feel like if they'd shown up like one time more near the end of the film, it would have felt more like it was kind of tying it all together. It kind of they they kind of stepped off stage a minute too soon. Um, also, now, this is something that took me by surprise. There's a character played by Rihanna, as in as in singer Rihanna, you know, mega pop star Rihanna, Rihanna. Um, and, uh, she's, I don't know if the, if, like, the role was written for her, just to kind of, um, if, if the role was originally in the script or whether it was written for her, but one way or another, it's, it's not exactly, it's a role that could be kind of cool, but it does, it, it's, she's there for really a very brief period of time and it's it's a shame because she's actually kind of a cool character and while Rihanna is not exactly the best actress in the world she's not terrible you know it's like she's not exactly you know no one is going to mistake her for the next Olivier for more than one reason, <laughs> but but um, she's not bad. I mean, she you know she she's all right, but she's she's the gone. You could you could if her character if you're gonna put her in there, she really should have stuck around for a bit longer. Um, and is there a few just like bits like that that it feels a bit unbalanced in that regard, and it's. That's kind of weird, given that the, the movie is, like, almost two and a half hours long. You'd think something, you know, that sort of... It, it, there's plenty of time to work out all these sorts of things. Um, but, yeah. Um, I guess that's actually pretty much it. I don't really have much more to say. It's... It's... Not a perfect movie. But it is, if you want to see, if you're kind of interested in, in, like, that sort of comics, if, I mean, if you're, you know, probably if you're an American fella like me, um, and you're wondering if, you know, this sort of thing is like, you know, hey, I've heard about this, I wonder if it's worth get, looking into, well... Uh, this, 
uh, one way or another might be a good kind of a, an entry into... It's like, it's not the the next fifth element. The fifth element is better. Um, but it's... Um, it is good. It's, you know, there's, you know, some, some funny bits in it. And it's, like I said, it, it looks amazing. And... Uh, it's overall, you know, it's consistently entertaining. There's some good action. There's some good. There's some nice set pieces. There's, you know, a, a mind-boggling imagination. Um, and it's, it's a good, like I said, kind of a gateway into, the, you know, those French fellers, Franco-Belgian fellers, comic type stuff. <laughs> Yeah, basically, if you like this, you'll probably like this, um, and uh, more or less other way around. Like, like I said, there's some discrepancies in character and so forth, but it's a good kind of introduction to like that sort of style of science fiction that the Europeans do so well, and that we really could use a bit more of over here. So, yeah, I'd recommend you see it, and it probably, you know... Be a good it probably would be a good idea to see it in the theaters, um, if possible. Or if you can't do that, at least see it on like a nice big screen. You know, see it where you can really appreciate the visuals and like a pop. You know, because this is not something you watch on like you know one of those little sort of tiny matchbox sized screens. It's, you need to appreciate the visuals for this sort of thing. You need to. So, yeah. I recommend it. It's not the greatest movie ever. It has a flaw or two. But overall, the positives certainly outweigh the negatives. And there aren't that many negatives. So, that's my review. Um, other stuff coming along the pike before too long. Um, you'll see. So, uh, yeah. Wake up out.